Wayland is the future. I don't really think there's any value in debating whether that's the case. Sure, we can have discussions about whether it's the present. I don't think it is. I still think it needs a lot of work, especially for use cases like I have, like global hotkeys, for example, which are very useful. And there's certainly fun thought experiments we can have as well. But some people legitimately think that X12 is going to happen. X12 is going to save us from Wayland. X12 is going to replace X11. And we're all going to start using X12. X12 doesn't exist and is probably never going to exist. I'm going to discuss in just a moment why that's the case. But as for X11, Xorg is in maintenance mode. There's no other X11 implementations that really matter. So unless someone makes one and takes over the project, that's just not going to happen. And recently, some guys on my Discord shared this GitHub gist with me from Pro Bono, the maintainer of app images. This is titled, Think Twice Before Abandoning Xorg, Wayland Breaks Everything. And as we saw from a recent video I did, he has an extreme hatred for anything even remotely touching Red Hat. Now, this was written a while ago, so a lot of the reasoning, a lot of the examples in here are both flawed and outdated. But if you say enough words, you will eventually say something that seems to make sense. And while a lot of this is not correct now, I do agree with the general statement being made. Take these specific examples with a giant pile of salt, but Wayland breaks screen recording and screen sharing applications. Now this is slowly starting to be addressed with the use of pipe wire and portals, but it's not something that is complete. While OBS works, Totally fine. I can do everything I need to do. There's a lot of cases where you might be using some proprietary application that hasn't been updated yet with Wayland support. You can't use screen sharing because it only works over on the Xorg side. Or maybe some other random screen recording applications that haven't been updated yet don't work with Wayland yet. Or only work with like a specific kind of Wayland. Because the Wayland spec doesn't have a capture API to find, it might be using the GNOME extensions or the KDE extensions or the WL Roots extensions, and you have to do a lot more work to check if your application is going to work on Wayland. One great example of this is with tools like Redshift, which the main version of Redshift doesn't work on Wayland, but there is like some weird workarounds. You can apply the color temperature before starting the compositor, or you can use this GNOME tool, or you can use this KDE tool, or you can use these tools for WL Roots. Like, it's it's just really, really messy. As I mentioned, and I've mentioned plenty of times in the past, global hotkeys don't work because this is a security measure, otherwise known as breaking features that everybody expects to be there. But portals are a proposed solution to make this work. It's pretty well known that NVIDIA hardware has problems on Wayland. NVIDIA has fully acknowledged this themselves. Apparently, there has been issues with screen tearing on Intel APUs. And if you're the sort of person who likes to use a GUI file manager as root, which I know some people are going to say, you shouldn't ever use a GUI program as root. I don't care if you say you should use it or you shouldn't use it. It is something you can do over on the Xorg side. On Wayland, though, there's no easy way to do it. Like, there's workaround ways by using a program called Xhost, but it's not a straightforward, hey, I run sudo and it does the thing. And obviously, because it's a completely different protocol, all of the window managers that have been built up over the years, things like i3, DWM, BSPWM, Awesome, and things like that, unless they go and remake themselves from the ground up with Wayland in mind, basically have to be ditched. Some of these problems can be addressed as time goes on, but some of them are just inherent to the fact that Wayland is not a one-to-one -one replacement for X11. And right now, because of a lot of these problems, I don't think any Wayland compositors are daily driver ready for some people. I, being one of those people, not having global hotkeys is a massive, massive drawback. Plus, I've seen random games just not work on Wayland. I have no idea why. But if you're someone who just uses their computer for school, you just write documents, you go into your browser, check your emails, you're maybe the mom, the aunt, the grandma, someone like that, who had their laptop stolen by their kid, that kid installed Linux on it, and then just gave you back the device. For those people, I think it is pretty much daily driver ready, with the exception of a couple of screen sharing applications where it might be a problem. But while I have problems with the current state of Wayland compositors, 
I at least want to keep stuff grounded in reality and focus on things that are actually real. So let's go over some of the main arguments that are being made here. TLDR, Wayland is not as one-to-one -one compatible Exorg replacement just yet, and maybe never will. Okay, so, Wayland is not an implementation of a compositor. Wayland is a protocol. Exorg is a display server. These are not the same things. If we're going to talk about Wayland and Exorg in the same context, it's generally better to be focusing on X11, even though Xorg is really the only X11 implementation that actually matters. Now, I'm going to say something that a lot of people really don't want to hear. For better or worse, Wayland is effectively X12. Why do I say this? Well, each new version of X, at least if I'm understanding it correctly, was historically incompatible with the last. So when X10 came out, it wasn't compatible with X9 software. When X11 came out, it wasn't compatible with X10 software. But there may have been compatibility layers between the two, like we see right now with X Wayland over on the Wayland side, where X, where X Wayland is going to support the X11 applications to run them under X12. And who develops Wayland? Well, a little organization known as freedesktop.org, otherwise known as FDO. And who did they merge with at one point in the past? Well, another little organization known as the Xorg Foundation, which, as the name would suggest, made Xorg. And they were also the ones who were managing the X11 specification. So right now, Wayland and Xorg are developed by the same people. And the reason why X12 will probably never exist is because Wayland predates it. A lot of the Xorg team is now working on Wayland. And if we look at some of the early discussions about what X12 was going to be, it's basically what Wayland is right now. Sure, there is a lot of things that are not the same. Things like network transparency are not a part of Wayland. But a lot of the other things that were going to be in it are already there. And while I'm saying things that people don't want to hear, it's very well established that FDO was started by a GNOME dev who was working at Red Hat. This is why people call things like, say, Flatpak a Red Hat project, why they call Wayland a Red Hat project, why they call a lot of other things in here Red Hat projects. But do you know what they don't call a Red Hat project because it's very inconvenient? They don't call Xorg a Red Hat project, but by the same definition, it absolutely is. Next up, Wayland solves no issues that I have, but breaks almost everything I need. I wouldn't say it solves no issues. Maybe no issues that you personally have. But things like built-in compositing pretty much mostly eliminate screen sharing without the drawbacks that exist on the Xorg side, where in some games, I get really noticeable stuttering. In the case of WSL2, it provides a very easy way to pop out windows and then render them in the Windowsy way. There's actual high DPI support. Multi-monitor support is literally dead simple, and starting up your compositor is very easy. You don't need to go through these like extra applications with these startup scripts and things like that. You can just run the program and it just it just starts. And usually it stays broken because the Wayland folks only seem to care about GNOME and alienating everyone else in the process. Once again, I wouldn't say that's exactly true. I would say the GNOME folks basically only care about GNOME. That's fair to say. It's pretty uncontroversial. The KDE folks also pretty much only care about KDE, maybe in a less destructive way, but they care about the thing that they care about. But what about this whole other group of Wayland users who use WL roots based compositors? They don't care about GNOME. They don't care about KDE. That is the place that people like me are probably going to go one day and are generally working on far more open solutions. And then the final point, Red Hat and GNOME bad. Do not install Wayland or force more Red Hat slash GNOME components glib portals pipewire on everyone. You don't have to use Wayland. You don't have to use Pipewire, but saying Pipewire in this context does imply that Pulse Audio isn't made by Red Hat, which I'm pretty sure is well established. Like, it's one of the main things people complain about, and you don't have to use portals. He doesn't mention what portals are linked to, but considering he is the maintainer of app images, 
you can imply the fact that he also doesn't like flat packs as well. One of the great things about Linux is Red Hat can't force you to use anything. They literally only make software. If by force what you mean is moving focus from one project to another, sure, that's forcing if you want to completely change the definition of the term. But I would say it's a pretty disingenuous way to phrase it. But let's talk about some of the other programs that are on FDO right now. Because the definition of a Red Hat project means hosted by FDO, let's find out what else is a Red Hat project. DBus, Policy Kit, Network Manager, all of the XDG tools, because those are all made by Free Desktop. We've got Mesa, we've got the Novo drivers, you know, those open source NVIDIA drivers, the ones that originally existed. We've got things like Font Config, Lib Input. Uh, what else do we have in here? We've got GStreamer, we've got Poplar, we've got some random cups thing, and some projects that used to be hosted here, but now are hosted elsewhere. Things like Flatpak, LibreOffice, uh, Udisks, Varpy, pretty much, you know, your system's a Red Hat system, whether you like it or not. It's why I've never understood the hate for Red Hat. When their name isn't attached to a project, or there isn't some way to link Red Hat to that project, no one really cares. Red Hat makes good software, and people go about their day. But the second that someone finds out, they completely flip out, say Red Hat bad, it doesn't matter the software's been good this entire time, we can't support Red Hat. If anybody has any actual insight on why people don't like Red Hat, I would love to know. Like, I struggle to understand why this is the case. I've thought it over so many times, and it never makes sense to me. Anyway, that's going to be it for me, so let me know your thoughts down below. If you think I'm completely wrong about Wayland, it's not going to be the future, I want to know why. Or maybe you think it already is the present, and everybody should be using it. I would love to know why about that as well. So if you like this video, I'm going to go and like the video. If you really like the video, and want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe, selling barrel pay, linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech for Tea. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Optum Plays. That's going to be it for me, and I'm out.